Agora TV. The world is thinking. You exist. You're alive. That's really quite a marvelous thing to be able to say when you stop and think about it. For you to be here now, trillions and trillions of drifting atoms had somehow to come together to make you. In the whole history of the universe, atoms have never got together quite this way before, and they never will again. These atoms came to Earth from all over. They could be anything. But for some reason, they've decided for a few tens of years to be you. That's pretty extraordinary, if you ask me. Now, why atoms do this is a puzzle. Being you is not a gratifying experience for the atom. <laughs> An atom doesn't even know you're there. It doesn't even know it's there. Atoms are mindless particles. They, after all, they don't know a thing. Yet somehow, for the length of your existence, these tiny devoted particles will engage in all the delicate cooperative efforts necessary to keep you humming, to make you you, to give you form and shape, and that you enjoy this, the rare and supremely agreeable condition known as life. Now, this is really hard to explain because there's nothing special about the atoms that make you. A human being or any other living thing is an assortment of almost embarrassingly mundane components, principally carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. This is the same stuff you would find in a pile of dirt. The only thing special about the atoms that make you is that they make you. That is, of course, the miracle of life. But having obliging atoms is only part of the good fortune that got you here to the Guild Hall on quite a lovely evening in 2010. You've also been incredibly lucky genealogically, ancestrally. Statistically speaking, you shouldn't be here. None of us should. Survival on Earth is surprisingly hard work. It is a curious fact of our existence that we come from a planet that is very good at producing life, but even better at extinguishing it. Of all the billions of species of organism that have sprung up and existed on Earth in its long productive history, 99.99% are no longer here. They're gone, gone forever. The remarkable fact is that the normal condition for a species on Earth is to be extinct. The average species on this planet lasts for only about four million years. If you wish to last longer, as we most assuredly do, then you must continually recreate yourself. You must be prepared to change everything that defines you. Shape, size, color, physiology, diet, metabolism, everything. And to do so repeatedly, in the right sequence of precisely the right historical moments. For us to be here now, it has been necessary for our ancestors to make all kinds of wholesale adjustments, all of them random, none of them inevitable or even necessarily logical, but every one of them necessary to get us here today. So we've been very lucky in that way too. But even that's not enough. You've also got nearly four billion years of reproductive good fortune behind you as an individual. Consider the fact that for you to be here now, every one of your ancestors on both sides since the dawn of time has been attractive enough to find a mate, robust enough to reproduce, and sufficiently blessed by fate and circumstance to live long enough to do so. Not one of your forebears in nearly four billion years on either side was squashed, devoured, stranded, starved, stuck fast, pipped by a more glamorous suitor, spurned or otherwise deflected from its life's quest of delivering a tiny charge of genetic material to the right partner at the right moment to perpetuate the only possible sequence of hereditary combinations that could result, eventually, astoundingly, and all too briefly, in you. I don't wish to belabor the point, but life is a damn lucky thing when you stop to think about it. Your existence is a miracle, and you really shouldn't let a day pass that you don't rejoice in having it.